See, there's always a knee-jerk reaction is that we have a humanitarian crisis. Uh, we caused it. Therefore, we're responsible for them. Well, that's part of the answer, but Hillary Clinton is responsible for it in large part. By the way, have ha how have some of the other waves of recent Muslim refugees done in America? Focus especially on the Somalis. Have they assimilated? What percentage of them use welfare? Do they work in assembly lines? I'll be right back. Think about it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. For years, Iran's rip, uh, rapidly accelerating enrichment capability and burgeoning nuclear stockpile has represented one of the greatest threats to peace and security anywhere in the world. We all stipulate to that. That's why we need an agreement. And that's why I'm so pleased that we have so many statements of validation from people out. The agreement is one of the great, the experts say, this agreement is one of the greatest diplomatic achievements of the 21st century. It would be funny if it was funny. Here is a woman who was a lunatic, who has made a laughing stock of the word congresswoman for so many years. Now she gets up there and, and mumbles her way through one of the greatest diplomatic achievements. I mean by, 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 by ignoring the will of the people, ignoring the will of both houses of Congress, ignoring common sense, ignoring the will of uh, national security interests. This lunatic is for it. There's only one reason for this. Follow the money. She smells the $150 billion. Remember that? Never, ever forget why these people vote for anything. They'd sell their grandchildren out for $2. If there's $2 more in the kitty, they'll go for it. $2, they'd sell a country out. If they can if squeeze out a contract somehow. You think I'm making this up? I don't know. I'm inventing it. I'm a very suspicious person of... Democrat socialists who have done so much damage to this nation. And I suspect that if anyone really wanted to do due diligence, they could find money flowing on this Iran deal right into, well, who knows where. I don't mean Mrs. Pelosi, of course. She's as clean as the driven snow. No, no, I mean others in Congress who might, just might have side deals that we would never know about. It's never happened before, as you well know. It's not known in the American political system. Doesn't work that way, of course. No one gets any anything uh, from these deals. They do it purely out of altruistic uh, motivation. And so we're hearing callers, like that gentleman from Detroit, who's a very intelligent man, a, a Syrian of Christian descent, telling us we should take in 10,000 Syrian refugees because they're going to go to work on the, on the, motor, on the, on the, on the plant, on the, on the production lines. And I asked, well, what about the people in Detroit who don't have jobs? No answer. Sue, KSFO, what's your main point on immigrants and welfare? In uh, the Columbus Dispatch on May 21st, 2011, there's an article called Welfare to Work Faltering in Ohio. And it talks about how Clinton's welfare to work program was uh, so far behind uh, in Ohio and that they weren't putting any more welfare people to work. Well, down at the very bottom of the article, almost at the end, there's a little paragraph that says, and immigrants, most from Somalia, make up a fifth of the county's welfare rolls. So what that means is Somalians uh, started immigrating to Columbus, Ohio, around um, the turn of the century, which would make this about 11 years in, and they have managed in 11 years to comprise... Well, we're turning the century, and it's 15 years now. The article was written in 2011. Okay, so you're saying by the year uh, 2011, they accounted for 20% of all ref, uh, welfare use, the Somalis. You think it's gone up or down? Up, no doubt. Would you, would you agree that we should take in 10,000 or more Syrian refugees, most of whom are Muslims? Yes or no? Absolutely not. Okay, you win a copy of Government Zero when it's available. You'll get one of the few copies of the first edition. It's the Savage Nation. Be Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Many others want to deal with Iran, because there's a lot of money in it. It frees up $150 billion in sanction money. Oh, I know it doesn't work, doesn't go to them, I understand that. It's for altruistic reasons that they want a terrorist state to have nuclear weapons. He has to take in at least 10,000 Syrian refugees, at least, according to Obama. He decided. President Obama has decided that the U.S. should take in at least 10,000 refugees from Syria over the next year. And he's passed this dictatorial directive onto his administration. And we learn that the Presidente and Secretary of Hate, John Kerry, are in alignment on the numbers. How do you feel about that? Should we take in 10,000? Why not 50,000? Why not 100,000? The EU wants us to take in 100,000. Figure 20,000 here, 20,000 there, 2,000 per state. Why don't you take some refugees into your, into your own home, those of you who want them? Borders, language, culture, Michael Savage. Borders, language, culture, that's how you define a nation. Obama has erased our borders, turned our language into mush, a polyglot nation, where ballots are in 16 languages in, in some cities. Culture? <laughs> you must be joking. What culture? Which one are you referring to? The culture he learned about in the madrasas in Indonesia? Which culture do you think he, res he responds to most? Our culture or a foreign culture? So we have very serious issues right now. Refugees flooding Europe. Europe is going to disappear in your lifetime unless these refugees are stopped. The jihadists are being put on European soil. Now Obama wants to put... He says at least 10,000 Syrian refugees. How many of them will be jihadists sent into this nation as Trojan horses? There's no risk to our society. Of course we want to help genuine refugees, do we? How many can we take in? When does this madness end? How in the world can this flow of biblical proportions be stemmed? Why must the United States of America which was once immune to invasion, now be invaded from within. Cato the Elder wrote about it. Many, many historians wrote about men like uh, the type we have now running the country. Not limited, by the way, to the president. No, not at all limited to the president whatsoever. The enemy within was uh, referred to by Cicero, rather not Cato the Elder. It was the introduction to one of my previous tomes. The enemy within... So how do you feel about that? 855-407-282. Where should we put them? Where should they go? How should they be reviewed for possible terrorist ties? How can you review 10,000 people? How is that even possible? Who's going to do the review? College girls like uh, Josh Ernst? I mean, college boys like Josh Ernst? Who's going to review them? Who's going to do the vetting? Who's going who's gonna, to who's gonna see if they're uh, refugees or jihadists? Then there's the nuclear chess game with Iran, with our grand chess master, Obama, playing for the other side. Who's playing for this side? I don't know. Who's, who's playing chess for our side? Which one is on the, our side of the board? Nancy Pelosi? She's one of the pawns of the chess game. But who's actually playing this chess game with Iran for us? It's not Donald Trump. Or there would have been no deal. How could you see this deal as valid for America when we, we've not even gotten back one of our hostages, including a former U.S. Marine? How in the world can you accept this without seeing it for what it is? It's so clear. Who negotiates a deal of this magnitude without saying, first return the refugees, then we'll have, a, I mean, our, our hostages. Then we will have a negotiation. Otherwise, go to hell. Go to hell. No, how, how is it possible unless this was a sellout from the, from the get-go? Have you no sense anymore? WABC, Robert, where do you stand on these issues? What's on your mind? 
Um, as far as it taking in the refugees, if we absolutely positively have to, which I really don't want to, I would say bring in only women and children, because at least um, the men, if they're really honest, they can go back to Syria and fight for their country, and they wouldn't have to worry about their their family being raped and murdered. Well, there's a problem with your with your analysis, which is who is going to support these women and children? They'll go on welfare for the rest of their lives. They're not going to work. Children don't work. Women have to stay home to take care of the children, so immediately we have burdens on society when we have a bankrupt society to begin with. Where's the money supposed to come from, Robert? We're all talking as though it's 1950 and it's Pax Americana and we are unlimited money. We are broke. We're a basket case. Right, but if they're bringing the men in, we're probably bringing a lot of jihadists in with them, so I'd, and we'd be supporting them too. So if we're going to support somebody, I'd rather support just the women and children and make sure that we don't have any... Well, where is it written that we have to support anyone? Show me where it's written. Show where in the U.S. Constitution it says we must support poor, unfortunate people from around the world. Where is that written? It's not, and I prefer them not to come, but you know... This well, then let's leave it at that. I prefer them not to come. Let Muslim nations take them in. Muslim nations rolling in money like Saudi Arabia. Why aren't they taking the Syrians in? I, I don't know. From your lips to I do know. I studied it. The Saudis have said we're not taking in one Syrian because there are jihadists amongst them. We don't want them. How come they won't take them in? They all speak Arabic. They would be more accommodating in, in Saudi Arabia than uh, America. Why would you bring them here? Not using, not using common sense. There's a refugee crisis caused in part by Hillary Clinton's Arab Spring. Terrible tr uh, crisis. Which, by the way, is about to get worse. Russian reinforcements, as I reported yesterday on the Savage Nation, have landed in Syria against the will of the Fuhrer, I mean the President of the United States. He warned uh, Putin, don't you dare. They sent the, the world's largest nuclear air, uh, submarine in the world through the through the, uh, Dar to the through the Dardanelles to arrive in Syrian waters. The size of a nuclear submarine that dwarfs our own. They've sent in Spetsnaz forces, tanks, artillery to make sure that their stooge, Bashir Assad, is not overthrown. I love Fox News. The Obama administration's hopes to oust Syrian President Bashar Assad and make way for a democratic government in Damascus. Don't you love that? A democratic government in Damascus are being dashed again by evidence that Russia is joining the fight to keep them in power. A move that the State Department warns could further escalate the conflict. Well, it's not our conflict. What are we sticking our noses in it for? Why have we been funding Syrian opposition forces surreptitiously all this time? Huh? Why have we been doing this? What are we doing over there? Why are we meddling in the Syrian civil war? Well, what's it our business? I'm sorry to tell you I know what this is about. In my heart of hearts, I know who's wagging this dog. It's Israel. I'm a supporter of Israel, but it's Israel that has forced us to surreptitiously support the opposition to Assad because Israel's paranoid about Assad. Israel wants Assad gone. Israel's not clear thinking anymore. You like to think Israel's so clear thinking. You think Israel's uh, filled with geniuses. You say Israel, you think Mossad, you think chess masters. You could be 100% wrong. This is not the Israeli Israel of uh, Moshe Dayan and Golda Meir. This is the Israel of Prozac and Macy's credit cards in New York City. This is a new Israel. They think about as clearly as the Obama administration. Why would they want to overthrow Assad and see a jihadist take over Syria? How could that be better for them? They're going to inherit his air force, his navy, his weaponry. Why would they want that? Assad at least is a faction that they can control. Why would they want to overthrow Assad in Israel? What sense does that make to them? No sense at all. They're not thinking clearly. Again, they have muddled thinking, as do our leaders. There are no men of any brains left in Israel that I know of. I don't see them. Where are they? Where are these great chess masters of Israel? Where are they? Where are the geniuses of Israel that they would want to foment a civil war in Syria and, and have the U.S. use ISIS as a proxy to bring down Assad? Why would they want that? Have you thought about that? This is suicidal. The whole West has become gi a gigantic regions filled with lemmings. Lemmings. Ren lemmings running over a cliff under their guise of humanitarianism and all the liberal uh, shibboleths. 